Hello everyone, and welcome to another Sew With Me video, springtime edition. For today's video, I'll be taking you through the process of how I've made this classic style apron dress from the Otome No Sewing number 17. If you saw my 2023 spring sewing plans video, then you might remember this project being on my list of things to make for spring, but then I disappeared for nine months, and by the time I started thinking about posting videos again, it was winter. So since we are now back in spring, I thought I would finally share this video with you all today for some nice springtime Lolita sewing content. Enjoy! So like I mentioned in the intro, today I'll be making the tiered version of this lovely apron dress. I really only made one modification to this pattern, which was adding a third ruffle tier to the bottom of the dress. To do this, I had to make some adjustments to the original length of the skirt tiers in order to fit the ruffle in. So here are the new tier measurements I used to make my dress. You'll notice that my skirt is about 2 inches shorter than the original at 27 inches long, since I wanted the hem of the dress to stop just below my knees. Please note that these numbers do not include a seam allowance, so if you choose to make your using these measurements, please make sure to add a seam allowance to your pieces. This pattern did include a matching hair accessory, but I decided to go with this triangular headpiece instead. I just liked how simple it was and how it also had the little ruffle detail on it that matched the ruffles on the dress. Aside from that, the only other modification slash addition I made was adding pockets to the dress, but honestly I feel like that's sort of a given for me and my projects at this point, so I don't know if I would really consider that a modification, but I did just want to point that out since it was a change that I made that is not in the original pattern. My materials list is pretty short for this project, but for my main fabric, I'll be using four yards of this 58 inch wide light blue linen. I absolutely love the color of this fabric. I think it's such a lovely shade of blue that's absolutely perfect for spring. In terms of weight, I'd say this is a little on the lighter side when it comes to linen fabric. Definitely not heavy at all and is very, very soft to the touch. Like, oh my gosh, it is so nice. I'll also be using some fusible interfacing, one inch wide elastic, and some of this white flower trim. This project only had three pattern pieces that needed to be traced and cut out, which was so nice. I also made sure to add a half inch for my seam allowance, since the ONS patterns typically don't include a seam allowance for their pattern pieces. For the remaining pattern pieces, I had to draft those separately, so for the shoulder ruffle, waistband, and the button loop that goes on the back of the bodice, I drafted those out on some pattern paper following the measurements given in the book, and then proceeded to pin and cut them out on my fabric. For the skirt portion, I didn't use a pattern at all because I really didn't feel like using up all of my nice pattern paper just to draw out a bunch of rectangles, so instead I just used my cutting mat and a yardstick to measure everything out. And to be honest, this is usually how I prefer to cut out my skirt pieces, specifically when the skirt is made using rectangles because, again, I just feel like it's a waste of paper to draw out a bunch of rectangles, and honestly, I think it goes faster when you can just measure everything out on the fabric, cut, and go. Starting with the front of the bodice, the first thing I did was create the pleats that go down the center front by connecting these little markings I made on my fabric and then pinning them in place. Also yes, I know my fabric is very creased and wrinkly, and to be honest, it pretty much stays that way throughout most of the video because I'm gonna be honest, I was just not about to iron this thing the whole time. It's like every time I put it down, a new wrinkle or crease would form, and it was just so exhausting to stay on top of ironing this fabric each and every Every time. So just know that I do get the wrinkles out in the end, but for right now, we're just going to have to deal with a little greased wrinkly fabric, and that's okay. Once I had all the pleats pinned, I took it over to the sewing machine and sewed them in place. Okay. 
Okay, no, but the funny thing is, is that after I sewed in those pleats, I did in fact take my bodice over to the ironing board to iron in the pleats, but because I didn't have my spray water bottle to spray the fabric when I was ironing it, I couldn't get the creases out. And you know, one thing about me is that when I'm like in the zone working on something and I need something else that's not directly within reach, I'm just not gonna get it. <laughs> I'm just not. Next, with the right sides facing, I pinned and sewed the front and back bodice pieces together at the shoulder seam. I also did the same for the lining pieces as well. Continuing with the bodice construction, I started working on the ruffles that go along the sides of the bodice. To make things easier when sewing, I ironed the ruffles in half and then sewed two rows of gathering stitches along the bottom. I wouldn't normally sew two rows of gathering stitches on a project because one, it takes up a lot of time, and two, it uses a ton of thread. Like, a ton of thread. But each time that I have done this, I've definitely seen a notable difference in the quality of my gathers. They're a lot more even and also just easier to work with and sew in general. So I try to do this whenever I need to gather something, but again, doing this eats up a lot of your thread, so I would highly suggest having a few pre-wound bobbins nearby ready to go. With the ruffles all nicely gathered, I pin them along the sides of the bodice before sewing them in place. You'll want to make sure before you attach the lining to draw in the little opening that goes down the back on the wrong side of your lining fabric. With right sides facing, I pin the lining to the bodice around the neck opening, making sure to leave about a half an inch worth of space near the back. The last thing I needed to do before heading to the sewing machine was attach the little button loop that goes on the back. To do that, I just folded my little fabric tube in half, making sure to make the opening large enough for my button to fit through, which it does. Now, had I read the instructions properly, I would have realized that I was actually supposed to put the button loop in between the lining and the bodice, as you can see here in the instructions, not pin it to the inside of the lining like you see me doing here. But hey, we all make mistakes, and now those of you watching can use this as an example of what not to do. You're welcome. To create the back opening, I just cut down the center of the bodice and made two tiny snips near the curved part at the bottom as well. This just helps it to lay flatter once it's turned right side out. Okay, so looking back at this now, you guys, I have no idea how I didn't realize that I had sewn that button loop on wrong. But unsurprisingly, once I turned it right side out, it did not take long for me to realize my mistake. And here is a live reaction of that in three, two, one. Uh-oh. Oh no! God damn it. <laughs> Did it backwards. Thankfully, fixing this little mistake was pretty easy. All I did was undo the stitches around the button loop, flip it over to the correct side, and then re-sew it in place. And just like that, we have a proper button loop going in the right direction. With the button loop situation corrected, there were still a few more things that needed to be done with the bodice before I could move on. The first was doing some top stitching around the neck and back opening of the bodice. I know people have mixed feelings about doing top stitching, saying that it adds more work to a project, but if you're looking to give your project a more finished look, top stitching is definitely going to be your friend. 
The second thing I need to do was to attach the lining to the bodice at the sides by turning the edges of the lining in by half an inch and then sewing it along the edges here to secure it in place. Not gonna lie, this part was actually kind of difficult. <laughs> I kept having to stop at certain points just to make sure that I was actually catching the fabric on the other side and at the same time also try to make sure that my sewing lines were straight. So yeah, there was a lot going on here, but my advice to help making sewing this part easier is to one, iron your fabric. You can iron over the edges of the lining as well as the seams for the front of the bodice and the ruffle to make sewing them together easier. Two, use a lot of pins to prevent your fabric from shifting. And three, go slowly and take your time. It's not a race and in the end, no one knows how long it took for you to sew something unless you tell them. With the bodice pretty much done at this point, we can now finally move on to the easiest part of this whole project, which is putting together the skirt. I started off first by sewing two rows of gathering stitches along the top of all of my tiers, and yes, I mean all of them, including all three and a half yards of my little ruffle. Once all of the gathering stitches were in, I prepped my ruffle tier by ironing and sewing the hem, as this is definitely not something you'll want to do after it's already been gathered. From there, it was just a lot of gathering and adjusting the second tier to fit along the bottom of the first tier, and then sewing them together. I also sewed a line of top stitching on the front at the bottom of where the two tiers were sewn together, making sure that my seam allowance on the back was pushed up towards the top of the dress. Next, I went ahead and added on my pockets and with right sides facing, sewed the front and the back of the skirt together along one of the sides. Once that was done, I gathered and pinned the ruffle to the bottom of the dress. This part did take a while, but you can save yourself some time by dividing your ruffle into two parts, i.e. one ruffle for the front and one for the back, versus gathering down one super long ruffle like you see me doing here. I also top stitched along the front like I did with the previous tiers, and then finished up the skirt by sewing it along the other side. Now we're going to move on to one of the more confusing slash difficult parts of putting together this dress, which is putting together the waistband. The instructions are okay, but there are definitely certain parts that can be a little hard to understand. So for those of you looking to make this dress in the future, I tried my best to give as much detail as possible for this section so that you won't have to struggle as much as I did when I was trying to put it together. So let's go over all the pieces first. In total, you should have six pieces for your waistband, two pieces for the bodice front, two pieces for the bodice back, and one piece piece for each of the sides. The four smaller pieces that you'll use for the front and the back of the bodice all require interfacing on the wrong side, so make sure you attach that first before you start. You don't need to add interfacing to your side pieces since these will end up creating the channels you'll use for your elastic later on. So starting with the bodice front, you're going to take one of the four smaller waistband pieces and place it right side down on top of your bodice, meaning the side with the inner facing is facing up towards you. Then you're going to flip your bodice over and on the back side, take another one of your smaller waistband pieces and place it right side down on your bodice as well. 
So basically what you're doing is just sandwiching your bodice in between your two waistband pieces like you see here. And both of these pieces should also be slightly longer than your bodice by about a half an inch on each side. This is so that you can attach these side waistband pieces later on. But back to the construction, again you're going to take one of your waistband pieces with the right side down and place it on top of the front of your bodice and then flip the bottom up and take another piece and place it right side down on the back side of the front of your bodice and pin it along the top edge here. For the back of the bodice, you'll just repeat the same steps and once you have everything pinned, you can take it over to the sewing machine and sew everything together. Next, you'll want to iron open this middle seam here for both the front and back of the bodice. Next, we're going to attach these side waistband pieces, which should be the exact same width as the two pieces we just sewed. You'll want to pin both of your side waistband pieces to your front and back waistband with the right sides together. You'll do this on both sides so that your front and back bodice are connected to the side pieces like this. This next step might be a bit confusing, but stay with me as I try my best to explain it. Basically what we're going to be doing is creating the opening and the waistband for the elastic to go through. To do this, you'll make a small marking on the innermost waistband piece, i.e. the side that will be touching you when you're wearing the dress, that's 3 centimeters away from the center seam. So for the bodice front, you'll make the markings on the lower part of the waistband, and for the bodice back, you'll put the markings on the upper part of the waistband, again starting from the center seam. To sew the front, you're going to start here at the top, sew down until you get to the center seam, skip this 3 centimeter section, and then place your needle down at the little mark that you made, and continue sewing until the end. For the back, you'll start sewing here at the top, stop once you get to the little mark that you made, skip the 3 centimeter section for the elastic, and then starting from the center seam, continue sewing the rest of the way down. And here's our fully sewn together waistband, complete with our little opening for the elastic. You'll know you've sewn everything together correctly if one, when you fold the waistband in half, you can see the little opening on the inside of the waistband, again the side that will be touching you, and two, with the waistband folded in half, you're able to easily fit your elastic into the opening without any trouble. With the waistband complete, we can now work on attaching the skirt to the bodice. The easiest way i found to do this is by turning the bodice inside out. and then placing the skirt with the right side out inside of the bodice like this. Then you'll want to gather down the top of your skirt, which I've already done, and pin and sew it to the bottom of the waistband. You might also find it helpful to mark the center point of the side waistband pieces beforehand so that you can match them with the side seams of the skirt just to make sure everything lines up properly when you go to sew it. Next, we're going to turn in the top edge of the waistband by half an inch, fold the entire waistband in half, and then sew it along both the bottom and top edge. To finish up this dress, the last thing we need to do is insert the elastic. I ended up cutting mine at the longest length for this pattern, which was 17 centimeters, and then cut out two pieces, one for each side of the waistband. Then taking one of the elastic pieces, you'll start to slowly insert the elastic into the side waistband. To prevent the ends of the elastic from getting pulled into the channel, I made sure to leave about a half an inch out at the end, then tucked it into the front part of the waistband like this, and then pinned it to the dress to hold it in place so I could continue moving the elastic through the channel. Once I reached the other side, I made sure to pull out a half an inch of the elastic and tucked it into the front part of the waistband like I did with the other side. 
Next, you'll sew one line of stitches on both sides of the opening like this to close the waistband and secure the elastic in place. After that, I just had a few small things left to do like sew on the button for the back of the bodice, make my matching hair accessory, and finally iron out all of those wrinkles and creases that I was too lazy to iron out before. But once I had all of that done, this project was finally complete, and here is the final result. putting together two looks for this dress. The first is just a simple classic cord. I paired it with mostly baby items minus the little bow that I stole from my AP Melted Cream Donut dress. Also for those who are curious, I am wearing a petticoat underneath, although I had to wear it lower on my hips in order to get this A-line shape since I don't have any longer ones, so definitely adding a T-length petticoat to my list of things to sew in the future. The second look is a more casual look that I actually really like, I'm not gonna lie. For this look, I paired the dress with this white cut sew from baby since i really liked how this style of collar looked with this dress i just think it's really flattering also can i just say how much i love how my natural hair looks with this headdress like um she's cute hello no petticoat for this look since realistically if i'm just wearing this dress casually at home i'm most likely not going to wear one so i didn't bother putting it on for this look but anyways thank you to everybody who has been patiently waiting for me to upload more sew with me videos i really do enjoy making these videos and sharing them with you all so I'm going to continue to work hard to get the rest of the videos I have filmed, edited, and out to you all as soon as possible. As always, thank you all so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye!